Hi, my name is Mark Orgetis. I work for the APP Group at Emerson Swan. Today we want to talk about a very common application used in the Northeast, heat trace. Basically, heat trace is a system that's designed to protect plumbing, mechanical, and fire protection piping from freezing. We have many applications from Invent, commonly known as Raychem, to meet specific needs when it comes to heat trace. This is accomplished with a system of components that you see in front of you. Here in front of me I have the pipe. On the pipe you will have a self-regulating heat trace cable that will be attached to the pipe itself. This cable is attached then to a Rayclick power connector, commonly known as a Rayclick PC. On one end you have the cable that's attached. On the other end you have a three wire whip where power can be applied to. Because the cable is self-regulating it can vary its output along the entire run of the cable. Meaning part of the cable can be warm and part of the cable can be much cooler depending on what it's sensing on the pipe itself. This makes it much more efficient, saving energy. The controller itself gets power in order to power the circuit. Power comes into the controller and then exits the controller to tie into the three wire whip. The controller itself is basically an on off switch. The way it turns on and off is by a sensor. We use an ambient sensor placed in the air that best represents the coldest conditions those pipes will see. The set point on this is usually 40 degrees. At 40 degrees, the heat trace system will kick on, allowing power to flow to the circuit. When the temperature reaches a bandwidth of plus 5, the heat trace circuit will then shut off and will only come back on when the temperature reaches 40 degrees or below. This is to prevent short cycling of the system. This component here is called the Rayclick T. It's a T connection used for branch lines within the heat trace circuit. We would still run off of the Rayclick PC originally, but then take the cable at a branch line and tie into the Rayclick T. This line would then continue through the other side of the T, allowing a branch line to be used to continue off. All branch lines and regular heat trace lines are then capped with a termination cap known as an end seal. A second application that heat trace is used for is flow maintenance. Flow maintenance is basically going to use the same components. The difference is, instead of keeping the piping from freezing, we're trying to keep the fluid within the pipe moving freely to, say, a grease intercept. Because fluids such as grease waste and oil have different properties, a different amount of heat may be required to keep those fluids moving freely. In grease waste, the ideal temperature for grease flow to flow freely through a pipe and go to the interceptor is 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Using the same components that we have here, we are still going to use a sensor to control the controller. But this time, we're going to place the sensor on top of the pipe. This is going to sense the temperature of the pipe and tell the controller when to kick on and shut off. The set point would be set at the 110 degree Fahrenheit level. A third application is hot water temperature maintenance. It's the same idea as grease waste, except we're using this system in lieu of recirc to try to keep the domestic hot water line at a constant 140 degrees. This eliminates things such as dead legs in a system, time to tap, and conserves energy as well as water conservation. The fourth and final application that's most popular in our area is roof and gutter de-icing. Again, we are using all the same components. The cable that we used is more a robust cable since this piping will not be insulated and protected from the outside elements. It is also covered in a floral polymer covering to help protect it further from the elements. The system works the same way, except we're trying to mitigate snow and ice from the roof, the gutter, and the downspouts. We do not want the system to turn on and off based on ambient temperature, because as we know, in the winter months, it can be very cold, but dry. In this case, the controller uses two different sensors to tell the system when to come on and come off. The first sensor is a GIT. This is a gutter sensor and is placed inside the gutter at all times. It is constantly looking for moisture in the gutter in order to tell the heat trace controller to turn on. In conjunction with that controller, we also use a what we call a snow owl. A snow owl is an aerial snow sensor. During a storm event of snow and ice, the storm owl and the GIT sensor will work in conjunction with each other. And if either sensor senses either snow or ice or moisture, it will tell the heat trace controller to turn on. The controller will continue to stay on, powering the system, until moisture or snow is no longer detected. After snow and moisture is no longer detected, 
the controller will still stay on for a period of about eight hours to make sure all snow and ice is cleared from the path of the gutter, the roof, and the rain meters. I hope you learned something today. If you'd like more information about any of these heat tray systems, please contact us at emersonsalon.com. Thank you.